Right, welcome back. Last time, well, um, oh, what we did was start the construction of the capital. Infrastructure in my capital. Plus, the amenities managed to reach rank 3, so that's good. And I've also gone ahead and started preparations for some other stuff. For example, I'm ready for a new form reform in Sovereign Courts. Sort of. I'm not quite 100% there. I've got all the requirements, outside of the fact that I need 150 admin points. Oh well. I have also started saving up diplomatic points in preparation for getting trade ideas. Since apparently, in order to get commercialization, I have to have all trade ideas. And since ideas tend to be decently expensive, needing about 300 per idea, I'd like to have about 2,000 Diplo points. So I'm going to avoid teching up in diplomatic technology, at least until I'm done with trade ideas, so that I can do some important reforms in order to allow commercialization to start appearing. No, not the High Judge. The High Judge was actually doing quite a bit to lower autonomy. Uh, sure, why not? Let's get another one. Apparently there's only skill 1 and skill 2 among advisors as well. Hmm. Interesting. Bureaucrats are certainly getting a lot of influence, though. Enough to pass three different reforms if I wanted to. Huh. I think for now, though, I want to lower global autonomy. Lowering provincial corruption will also be helpful, too, so... It's gonna be costly in loyalty, though, that's for sure. It's cost me corruption as well, and give me... Well, I'll take away a stab. Oh, well. Right, time to fix that. Let's see here. I guess now that autonomy is lowering again, I should be fine with removing some legitimacy. Yeah, the autonomy reduction isn't that bad. Promote and support commerce. Let's also provide some tax relief. Reform a show with devotion. There we go. That should keep them happy for the moment. Okay. I also have quite a few admin points now, so let's see if there's any good reforms. Banning the sale of offices would cost me stability and give me a huge amount of corruption since it's going to mainly impact corruption. It could also guarantee livable salaries. This increases wages, which will help well, this will increase costs, but it will also help lower corruption. I could also institute a clear hierarchy, which is going to damage my relations with the elites even more. Let's actually not do that for the moment. At least not damage it too much. I could also standardize recruitment of officials. Expand educational requirements. That costs more diplo points than I'm willing to give up, though. Let's just ban the sale of offices. It'll cost me admin points, and a lot of them, and a stability, and a huge amount of corruption, but for right now, the corruption is actually really manageable. So it shouldn't be that bad. Plus, that will help with dealing with the issues that corruption gives. Let's review the bureaucracy. So sale of Office 2 gives no effects. Okay. Court just so the sovereign court thing doesn't work. Same with a basic education. It's supposed to have no effects. Though. Okay, so never mind. Universal law would be really good to have. I need really good autonomy though. Fifty or lower. That is hard to achieve. I'm barely managing sixty-five percent as it is. 
the fact that I think autonomy is starting to increase again. Yep. That probably has to do with relations with the uh, well, elites being lowered, so that so they're now making more of an effort. I could use concessions to ancient liberties. That's going to hit, hurt my prestige game, but not by much. It's also going to hurt my yearly centralization for a while. But I can take it without centralization actually reducing. It's only going to last 10 years. Oh, okay, maybe not. That's a noble loyalty sounds nice, but it's not worth it. Clan power is 34%. Ability power is 64%. Okay, so it would raise by about 2% if I were to do the... Uh, um, promoting the Luster Nobility. It also gives plus 20 to Noble Loyalty. That's nice. The main issue is cost of stability. I could do arrange strategic mares and promote Luster Nobility at the same time. That way the power gain isn't as notable. Plus, it would make it so that they're no longer disliking me as much. Okay, promote Lust of Nobility as well. I don't like giving them more power, but for the moment, that seems to be the best option. Mm, no, not right now. I need those points for other things. Like the reform I'm about to do. Um... Oh, the bureaucrats don't have enough influence anymore. Oh. Promote the bureaucratic faction. Now I can do reforms. This is up to 34. Okay. So, institute a clear hierarchy. This will cost me a heck of a lot in the way of corruption. And admin points, but it's going to lower corruption in general and global autonomy. It will raise administration costs, but honestly, administration doesn't cost that much. At least not so much that I'm worried about it. Alright, let's see how much of an effect corruption, this much corruption has on my income. Because I've never made corruption this awful before. I've never hit 70. I've hit 65. I think I have hit 65, but never 70. This many reforms all at once. Wow. My resting point for corruption is quite literally half what it is currently. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, the resting point set. Uh, approximately 34. Yeah, approximately 34. Really, I'd say 34.2? Yeah, 34.2, more or less. Of course, there's also the fact that that state corruption modifier, modifiers, are also going to lower because... All these recent reforms have not only raised provincial corruption as a general amount, as the, the actual amount of provincial corruption, it also lowers the resting point for them as well. So they're also reducing. So the current resting point is not necessarily going to be the future resting point, etc. Yeah, I figured that hit my income. Alright, let's turn off the auto investor more or less. And I think I should finish for now, after I've... Huh, I just have to hit the button on or off. Okay. Right. I'll be turning that back on later. So. If you look at my corruption number up here, it's at 70. Yeah, the reason for that is that I've been doing massive amounts of reforms. I have banned the sale of offices. And, okay, I've already done tax farming with you. Um, I've instituted a bureaucratic hierarchy, or at least, well, organized it. 
No, I'm not going to touch that right now. Um, informal test. I think I've already done this. Uh, this should have effects, but it's not on. I've also put in Sovereign Courts, which, while well, it does say that it actually has no effects, so that's good. Yeah. In fact, is that all I've done? Yeah, now that I remember, it's been three major reforms, but all of them have far-reaching effects, especially with dealing with corruption. So now I'm a lot closer to getting to the point where meritocracy has the possibility of spreading into my country. Although for right now, there's no chance of that occurring. That's where most of my points, uh, that's where basically all of my points have been going into. Also, I have taxation. Taxation always occurs. Yeah. It's also why my stability is relatively low at the moment. I've been going through so many reforms. Things are a lot better now. Autonomy is definitely improving. I guess. It's supposed to be, but with how much the elites are not liking what I've currently done. Yeah. Loyalty has dropped a lot for everyone except for the nobility. I can keep the nobility happy pretty easily. The others, uh, there's fewer options to do so, but most of them, but the options I can choose are cheaper for me, more or less. Because among other things, I, it ca the one for the burgers costs trade efficiency, a bit bad because I get less income, but commerce is now also more effective, so I'm better capable of moving goods around. Which is actually quite nice. Clergy one, well, it costs a small smattering of points. So, stuff that's happening, well, I tend to pay not much attention, but it looks like Herod's grabbed a lot of territory from here. And the Golden Horde as well. Could they be making a comeback? Uh, Vietnam has almost reached the, uh, the coastline of Burma. Joy. Oh, and the Mamluks are invading Yemen. In fact, I think that's part of the reason why Ajaran has been not paying attention to me at all lately. They're a bit busy at the moment. Yeah. So, massive reforms. Things are going to be better, but they're going to be a bit more difficult. Almost doubling my level of corruption has certainly taken its toll on my income. Oh well, it's going to be... it's dropping rapidly. Next year it's going to be at 77, or actually 76, approximately. So things will be getting better. It's just going to take time, lots and lots of time, in order for the situation to stabilize, at least when it comes to state corruption. Anyway, I'll see you again next time. Until then, bye. Hopefully I don't go bankrupt next time. <laughs>